to another episode of Groovy Tuesday. My name is Paul Church from Clarity Stamp here in the UK. How is everyone doing today? Um, I shall just waffle on for a little bit whilst everyone pulls up a chair and gets comfortable. Um, there we go. I can see we've got some viewers. I shall just wait for the chat to kick in. So um, I know there's a slight time delay of me talking and um, everyone tuning in. So um, yes, it's sort of it's sunny, muggy. Good morning, Mo. Just back from three weeks in Mexico. Wow, miss seeing me on Groovy. Oh, thank you. At least you can go back and watch, can't you? Now that but hope you had a lovely time. Good morning to the lovely. Uh, who have we got? We've got Helen Stevens, Julie Campbell, Bernie Hayes, lovely Pat Hoskins, Maggie Craner. Good morning. Oh, here comes everybody now. <laughs> um, everyone's piling into the room now. Oh, dear. I'm glad it's a virtual room as well because it's very warm in this studio. I've got the fan on underneath my desk. Um, because there's no windows in here, even though I have the door open all day, and the fan on this morning um it's still very very warm so um what should we have our usual weather report i saw and just said that it's um overcast and it looks as if it's wanting to rain in clivero um helen's only been here for a little while today she missed us for a few weeks but you know what it's great because you can go back if you want to and watch all of the previous episodes. So if you've been away on holiday or you've been too busy, um, then you can go back and see what we got up to. Um, got Drizzle in Ripon, Overcast in Nottingham, um, Warm and Overcast in Crawley. Maggie says it's dull and almost chilly. Wow, better get that heating on, Maggie. <laughs> oh dear. It's overcast in Cornwall, oh for some rain on Thursday. Yeah, I think it's quite mixed this week, isn't it? I think they sort of keep saying um, it's meant to be, it's definitely meant to be a lot cooler, and it definitely is. I mean, yesterday there was a lovely sort of breeze or wind um, that was quite cooling if you was in the direction of the way it was blowing. So, um, so this is lovely. I love having all these um, weather reports from all over the country and all over the world we've got uh where was that one i've just seen uh we've got ellen says for a very warm gray south norway so um yes yes it is it's a real mixed bag is it i know they're forecasting again um more sort of the temperature increasing over the next couple of weeks so perfect opportunity to stay indoors, pull the curtains down, keep the heat out and craft. Um, whether we're doing stamping, whether we're doing knitting, whether we're doing crocheting or just a little bit of groovy, just that distraction just for an hour or so each day definitely calls the mind, I think. Um, especially when we're, we're looking at uh, the festive season on TV, Christmas. Um, definitely feel strange dealing with Christmas designs um, in the middle of this hot, glorious weather. And I suppose one of the benefits of, of being up at the TV is that they've got air conditioning. <laughs> but it does spoil you when you come out of the studio and walk out the door of the, of the building. And it's like getting off that aeroplane in a hot country and it just whoosh, it just sort of hits you. So I hope everybody's been behaving and staying out of trouble. Um, we're carrying on with our lovely leafy frame. So if you've missed us for a couple of weeks, let's have a bit of a, a recap on what we've been looking at. Um, so this is the, the plate. This is one of our um, A5 um, poetry plates. And we've been looking at this. I thought this was great because not only does it have a lovely poem on the inside, <coughs> excuse me, but this lovely <coughs> leafy frame. Excuse me, let me just have a slurp of coffee. Um, Sue is in the room with you today. I forgot to mention that. Um, so um, there we go. Sue's found us. So if you've got any questions, I mean, we've got the lovely design team in the room as well. So 
crafting while watching Wimbledon. Has Wimbledon started? Ooh, I do like a bit of Wimbledon every now and again. Um, I thought it was next week. Maybe it is this week. Don't know. Anyway, I digress. We've been looking at this um, poetry play that Sue's just popped the link up to. And um, I thought this was great because the leafy frame around the outside is so universal, can be used for different occasions, for male, female, young, old. It has that really nice um, generic feel to it. And you can use it on its side as well, the way in which it's been designed. And these were designed by the lovely Mel Turner. And as on one of the sessions, I showed up how we can sort of make it smaller. So you don't necessarily um, have to go for the full rectangle. You can make it smaller. You can use just a corner of it. Um, this would be great just down the side of a card into a corner um, with something else. Thank you, Maggie. Wilmington starts next week. Super duper. So we had a look at this play, and that's what we've been working on. Uh, we're now on week three on this. And, um, and what I thought would be great is that we'd combine it with the rose lattice plate that we used previously on previous episodes. Um, so just sort of bringing two designs, one that we, we spent a, a good number of weeks on uh, with that lovely lattice frame and Jane's rose in the middle and combining it with this leafy frame. So we had a look at how we could make it smaller. And then last week, I combined the rose with the poem. Okay. And um, what we did was, I put the rose in first, well, I did the frame first, then I put the rose in, and then I added in the poem. And what we had to do was just tweak it a little bit in relation to the positioning. See, so at beauty's glance and watch her feet. And all we did was we just moved it along a little bit so that it fitted around a rose. Okay. So that's where we've been looking at over the last couple of weeks. So if you want to see how that was done and you, you've been away, maybe you've been in Mexico like Mo has, or you've been busy the last couple of weeks, then you can go back and tune in and have a recap okay so i thought what we'd do is we'd have a look at some color on this one now when we worked with this rose previously um wherever i've put, I put it oh no i haven't got it have i i sent it off it was a a winner for um karen gilligan she won it on the 100th episode i'm just thinking that's why i couldn't find it this morning Dear, dear, dear. The, the brain cells are sort of slowly disappearing. That's why I couldn't find it. I spent 15, 20 minutes looking for it. So I'm thinking, where's it gone? And now the penny has dropped. I realize where it is. Um, so, but for the previous one, what we did, we looked at using the pergoliner pencils. So I thought for today's session, we'd have a look, we rarely go to them. We'd have a look at the dorso crayons. Now you can use pencils or you can use the pens it's entirely up to you but I thought what we'd do is we'd have a little bit of a, a play with the the dorso crayons and see what we can come up with because if you also make a mistake with the crayons you can rub them out with a double-ended eraser just like you can with the pencils so I thought that's what we'd have a look at today some different sort of uses for them with the mix mats the blending pens um, even a, a tissue, just to add some detail. So that's where I thought we'd head today. Um, got lots to tell you about of upcoming TV shows. So what we're going to need is we're going to need our dorsal crayons or um, pergoliner pencils. We're going to need our piece of artwork, just like so. We're going to need our blending pen, now back in stock, a mix mat. So I've got one that says oil. We definitely need some dorso oil, spot on sponge, um, and maybe a tissue if you've got one. And I think 
what we'll do, there we go, Karen says she's got her card. I'm glad you received it safely. Um, yeah, I'd completely space that. Totally, I, I couldn't find it at all. And I'm thinking, oh, I need to tidy up this room, but where would I have put it? But there you go, it's dawned on me. So that's what we're gonna have a look at during this session. Okay, I see Sue's just popped the links up to the Dorsa oil, to the crayons. Um, proved really popular on TV the last few weeks. So, um, so yeah, so I thought we'd, we'd get them out of the box and have a look. What do you think about that? Who's got the Dorso crayons and never used them? Who's still got them in the box unopened? Go on, hands up. I bet there's a number of you out there that have them and haven't even ventured to, to use them. It's definitely getting warm in this room. But a nice hot cup of coffee. <coughs> oh, excuse me. That definitely went. Try to drink before talking. Um, so let's have a look. So Sue's got them, never used them. Karen's got them, never used them. Pat Hoskins, I knew Pat Hoskins would have them. I bet she's used them very successfully over the years. Pat, a question for you. Is it still the original box of crayons that you have, or have you topped them up over the years? Um, that's right, Jane was demoing them at the open, open days. Kenny's guilty as charged, he's got them, never played with them. See, um, Jane Lindsay's got them and used them. There you go. See, it's a real mixed bag, isn't it? Um, Jean's got the lively ones, but not used them. Right, well, we're definitely going to change that. I think we should definitely get them out. All of you at home that have got them in an unopened box should get them out and have a, a play. Um, definitely. Because they are safe as well, because you can rub out if you don't like what you're doing, just like you can with the pencils. Right, are we good to go then? I reckon we are. Eyes down for a full house, as they say. <laughs> right, okay. So what we're going to do first, let's have a look. What are we going to do first? Come on, Paul, get your act together. I'm going to go with my practice piece first. Okay, I say my practice piece. This is a nice piece to experiment on um, using... Um, the crayons, okay. So if I take them out, they come in lovely little boxes. They're all protected in sponge, stop them breaking. But if they if they do break, I mean, it's not the end of the world. I mean, they're a crayon, okay. So, and then we have the um, natural colors. So you have a real nice sort of color palette. So because you've got the white in the naturals, you can then lighten your various different colors as well. And you've got black in there, so you can darken some of your colors, just like you can if they were pencils. Okay, some lovely different shades of green, so you've got a really nice, um, what sort of green would you call that? A sage green, I'd call that. And then you've got a, a dark forest green, you've got a really bright green. So I think what we'll do first, let me see. I'm going to take a piece of white card to start with. And I think we'll just scribble out some color onto a white piece of card. So let's start with the, um, the lively color. Okay, so if I do this, maybe you'll get a better idea on the colorings. So I'm gonna take a brush and then just brush off those crumbs. So let's have a look. Oh, that's a nice color. Okay, then we've got a, a lovely dark green. That pine, very waxy. Um, then we've got a, oh, that's nice. Nice gold color. And we've got a lightish brown. Mmm, really nice. Then we've got a darker brown. 
Then we've got our black. And then we have our white. Probably not going to see the white. No, of course you won't. Why would you see white on white? Let me just dust off. You can see the white now because it's picked up the color from the brush. Ooh, I wonder if that's a technique. Okay, so then we've got the, the vibrant yellow. Lipstick red. That's what that reminds me of. Then we've got the lovely blue. So just doing this, it gives you, sometimes you, you look at the colors, but unless you put it down onto um, a piece of paper or a piece of card, um, you can really see the true nature of those colors. Okay. And the purple, and then finally a dark sort of navy blue. Let me zoom in a little bit now so you can sort of see those in a little bit more detail. Right, where's my list gone? So I need to come inwards. So let's zoom in there. Okay. So you can see there you have a real nice sort of um, color palette. And I say you can combine colors together to come up with different colors. Okay. So let's see. If I want to, I'm going to go for um, this lovely green from the naturals. Okay. And um, what we're going to do is I'm going to add some color to my leaves. Okay. So let me just create some, give myself some space. So this is going to be my my practice piece to, to work on. Okay, so I'm going to apply the color on the back as normal. So I do have options. Okay, I can go directly onto the leaves with a little bit of color. Let's do a comparison. So if I do this side, I'm just applying the crayons direct. Okay, and then we can do the normal technique with a little bit of dorso oil on a spot on sponge, like so. Then I'm going to take a blending pen and an even now this one's already got green on it, okay, so I'm just sort of reactivating that, getting rid of some of the oil. Where my glass is gone tired eyes today. Definitely need the glasses. Definitely think I need to go back to that. Uh, that's a lot better. So now what I can do very lightly, just like we do with the, the pencil, I can start to blend out. It's not the pigment, it's sort of breaking down um, the, um, the crayon. Okay. So we can definitely see, look, if I put that underneath, I reckon I can get away with using that like so. So what we're doing now is we're just breaking the crayon down using the blending nib and the crayon direct to the parchment. Okay. I'm not worried about going over the edges. I mean, this looks rough. Okay, so I've just loaded up with a little bit more oil, like so. And we're just slowly spreading out the crayon. Because we all, I know I do personally, I always tend to go for the pencils. Um, I thought, you know what? I'm sure there's many a technique out there in the traditional parching um, library of different things that you can do with the crayons. But for me, the obvious thing, obviously, is um, they were used in a traditional style to sort of dorse in sort of larger areas in the background. Okay. And because we're coloring on the back again, it's not going to affect the white line up. Okay. 
So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to take my razor pencil, I'll probably get away, yeah, with the, the pink end. I'm just going to tidy up around the edges of the white lines where I've just gone over the edge, like so. There we go. Safety net, definitely. So we like to put the glasses on. So, um, question for Ria: Can I use the sponges? Yes, you can just keep using them. I often just keep turning them round. Obviously, when you start to run out of clear space, I mean, you could, if you want to, go down the sides as well. But they're definitely um, reusable. So we're just tidying up our lovely leaves. Definitely going to take a brush and just get rid of the debris rather than blow. Okay, so let's turn this over now. And now you can see we've got a really nice sort of subtle um, colour. Um, Jane Lindsay reckons that the dorso crayons came before the pencils. It is possible, and you may be right. Um, I'm sure some of our trad parchers, parchers, parchers in the room uh, will be able to answer that question. Um, I'm not sure the timeline of the release of the various different products from Pergamano. Okay. So now we've sort of, so that's one way of applying the color, okay? So that was just the crayon direct onto the parchment and then the blending pen just to sort of smooth out the color, okay? So another way of doing it is I can take my crayon and I can scribble onto my mix mat, okay. And then I can take a drop um, of oil, drop. He says a drop, and then he pours a gallon out. Come on, just a drop. Come on, there. Oh, look, see, I told you, look at that. One drop, two drop, three drop. Tap, tap, tap. Okay. So now the other option is we can pick up and we can mix the oil in with the crayon. Okay, like so. So let's have a look, see what this looks like. So let's do this side now. So now. So this tip of the nib, it's picking up the color, and so now we're using it like a pen. Okay. And then when it starts to become, if you find that it comes a little bit too glue, just go back and just mix a little bit more oil in with it. And then apply the colour as normal. Do you know my voice is really slowing down now? Nothing like a little bit of colouring or a little bit of getting in the groove to chill out. And I'm going to do that mindset. I'm going to say that it's really cold in this room. Does that really work when you say it? When you're feeling really, really hot, if you tell yourself that you're feeling really, really cold. Um, so, there we go. Pat Hoskins has said, yep, the crayons did come out first. There we go. So, we're just applying. And it does, see, I think I like this method. Seem to have a little bit more, not control, but I have got control because 
hopefully I'm staying within the lines. Okay, so now let's have a look. So that one's a little bit dark. So I can take out. If you find that you want to remove some of the color um, or you want to add more in, then you can sort of just start to sort of build up your layers. That's very, very soft and subtle. And I can still take my eraser pencil and tidy up. So that's where we've gone directly from the mix mat onto um, the blending nib and then painted or colored in, depending on what sort of reference you want to, to give it. I'm sure there is, for me, it's just coloring in. Um, so that's another option. Okay. Then there's a, another way we can do it. We can take a tissue and do the old icing piping bag. Okay, with the dorsing. So what we can do is we can turn it into a point. We can pick up the oil from our mix mat and then we can door or oil all over the back first. Okay, good way of cleaning <laughs> the oil off the back, off of your mat as well. So now here, what we've done, you can't see, I don't know if you can see, you can't see, but there's definitely a layer of oil on there. But because it's really warm in here, it's evaporated quite quickly. So what we can do now is we can take a clean nib because that nib, look, if you can see the difference, the nib in the pen is absolutely saturated with the dorsal oil that I picked up because I really flooded it. So now we can pick up our crayon and then color in. Let's have a look. Is that doing anything? Mm, a little bit. I reckon it needs a tiny little bit of the oil on the mix mat just to add that color. Mmm, not so sure about that. Let's put some more colour down. See, sometimes just having a play and see what comes up with. Um, let's have a look. I suppose if you was doing larger areas like hills and mountains, then what you're doing is you're putting sort of like an undercoat down, aren't you, with the dorso oil. It sort of acts as like a, a lubricant. So this is definitely giving me a lighter shade of green. I suppose that's good to know, isn't it? So we're still just picking up. I've only put a tiny little bit of oil on the nib at the very beginning. There we go. We definitely need some more. I think this method is using more of the crayon. It's quite creamy in consistency. Okay. tiny little bit of oil just to, to get the juices flowing, so to speak. Anybody else got any suggestions um, out there? So any of the experts out there think, oh, you could do this, you could do that, or definitely open to suggestion. Because I didn't really follow... I suppose the traditional style of um, parchment craft. Um, 
a lot of it I've, I've obviously seen um some of the trad parchers doing like josie and linda williams and and the likes but um i've never really sort of thought oh, okay um definitely more subtle okay let me bring a white piece of card in underneath so that we can maybe I really need um okay let's try this so let's turn it over and have a look let's move that out of the way so this one here this option let's bring it down a little bit okay so this option here is where I went direct onto the parchment um, and then used a blending pen with the Dorso oil in to spread the color out. This one across the top, I put the crayon on the mix mat and mix it with some Dorso oil. And then on this one down here, which is very soft and subtle, is where I um, put oil all on the parchment direct and then picked up the colour from the mix mat with a tiny, tiny bit of um, dorsal oil. So, and for me, when I'm colouring in, I always colour in on the back because it's the safest option for me because I haven't got to be careful staying away from the white lines because on the front, um, the fibers are exposed. So it's more likely to bleed into um, the white line art and take away the white line. Um, so which one, let's, let's do this, so we go, Number one, number two, or number three. So one was direct to parchment and blended out. Number two was blended on the mix mat. And number three was wiped on the back with the Dorso oil and then picked up from the mix mat. um so let's have a little vote shall we which one um which one do you think looks best so pat's saying number two. Oh, there we go all of a sudden a flurry oh it's a real mix no one's going for number three yet i agree it's either one or two for me definitely What a, isn't it clever? I mean, I do like the subtleness of that. And I, I can go back in and add more color to intensify it if I want to. Um, it's interesting though, isn't it? The different sort of techniques. And I suppose it would be the same with the pencils because the techniques I've just, are they techniques? The things I've just played with, I wouldn't, I'm not going to call them techniques because techniques make them sound as if they're clever. They're not. <laughs> it's just different options. And the let's call them soft techniques that I've just used with the crayons. You can do exactly the same with the pencils as well. So if you've got the pencils, try the different options. Try um, scribbling out like we normally do on your parchment with the B pencils and then blending out with the um, Dorso oil. Then maybe try scribbling it out on the mix mat and then putting a little bit of oil and then coloring in the leaves. And then the other option is where you wipe the back of the parchment with the Dorso oil and then scribble out. I mean, you could do a mix on that one. It really is. Um, so, Ah, so Glynis was saying, um, we also used to get a paper stump, dip it in the blending solution and take the color from the crayon. Hmm. Okay. 
interesting. So I'm just, I'm just getting carried away reading, sorry. Uh, track parties that didn't have to worry about what outlines as much as they very likely trace. It's just evolved and will continue to do so. That's good. Oh, thank you, Pat. Okay, so let's, all right, look, I've got a, a fourth one down here. So should we try what Galinius is suggesting then? Okay, let's give that one a go. Wouldn't have thought that. I suppose in my head when um, Barbara's using watercolour pencils, and often with, if this was watercolour pencils, often people would sort of um, take a, a wet brush and touch the pencil. And I just remember Barb saying about the dampness can cause the pencil to rot because it's wood. Um, but obviously there isn't any wood on the crayons, so there's nothing for it to to rot away, is there? Rot away? Is that right? <laughs> that doesn't sound like a proper word rot away oh dear right okay let's try this technique then from glynis okay i'm gonna put a tiny little bit more oil on my spot on sponge Whee, there we go okay glynis question and i'll have to wait for the, the response when you was using a paper stump did you really flood the um, paper stump with the oil or was it just a quick dip quick dip or flood that's all i need to know i can try both but come on glennis get typing <laughs> but i think it's great to show the various different um it's not technique, it isn't, I, I wouldn't call it a technique. Method, should we call it a method? What's the difference between a technique and a method? Is there one? I'm sure there is. Um, but try both because the nibs are a different animal. Thanks, Gladys. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, let's go for a quick dip. So I've done a quick dip with my nib into the dorso. And then I'm gonna stroke the crayon to pick up. Ooh, this is interesting. Very creamy. Mmm, interesting. Okay. A uh, little bit more oil. Not so much of the crayon. I'm doing it on black so you can't see until I do a reveal. Um, I think it looks okay, but I want to. It feels more creamy in consistency. Um, when I'm doing it this method. And the only sort of likable comparison that I can give um, was when I did it direct to the parchment. Um, I suppose because there's more colour down, wasn't there? I think, I think this will be nice. I can sort of see it, but I don't want to... Um, what are the Perga nibs made of? I think they've made um, of a similar material or as um, like felt tip pens because they sort of hold their shape. They're definitely not paper though, and I know paper um, were a lot more absorbent. I suppose anything, I mean, the nibs can be just as absorbent. If I mean, if I was to stick this into the dorsal oil, it would definitely absorb the oil. But then what you have to remember is that if you're doing that, it's always remove the nib when you finished because 
the oil will definitely cause see this one here is completely flooded compared to this one here that isn't you can can you see you can see, you can see, woo. You can see the difference in the color rate that the orangey is definitely where it's really flooded um so so should we have a look now should we have a look at this bottom bit i've got a feeling i might like this best but i might not when i turn it over ready look at what's all this mess okay let's turn let's turn it around okay i tell you what that it's annoying me let me get rid of all this debris you can't see it on camera um but on here look let me get rid of all of this <laughs> it's really bugging me see look see you can rub it out and i'm using the pink ends of the rubber to remove definitely not gone right up to the lines on these the light panel would make a difference on this when coloring in see those little pigments those little dust particles they get everywhere okay so let's turn it over now interesting okay so number four okay number four is where we've taken the nib to the crayon <laughs> i'm a mucky pup i am indeed i've probably got it no i haven't i thought i'd have it on my it's, it's those little dust particles isn't it but at least i could rub it all out so I'm pleased about that. Um, yeah, I quite like that technique. I suppose for finer areas, but I mean, these leaves are quite large, aren't they? Um, if I take, I don't, well, for those of you at home that already have the nibs, if I pop a nib next to the leaf, you can see they're quite big. But because if, if because if, that doesn't make sense. So if I wanted to work in a smaller area with the crayons, then I think that technique by taking the nib to the crayon. Um, thank you, Jane. Jane, the teacher in the room. Technique is a procedure or skill for completing a task. A method is the way something is done. Okay. See, I knew there'd be a difference. So... But to be honest, I don't think this is, I don't know, is it a technique? It's just, it's just playing. <laughs> um, so I do actually, I like number four now. Thank you, Glynis, for that. Um, so Pat's so saying a few scribbles on the back of the leaves with dorsal crayon and then spread with blending nib is best method. There you go. So, which was number one, wasn't it, Pat? Um, I should put some little notes on it because I'll forget what this one was. So, let me, I tell you what, let's write this down now for those of you that are, are tuning in. So, one was scribble and blend. I hate my writing. Scribble and blend. Then two was mix mat and blend. Three was oil and blend. And four was um, nib to crayon there we go 
So you could do something like this yourself, couldn't you? You could just trace out, you could just trace out a leaf several times um, and then just have this as your little key um, to see which technique, but it, maybe it will vary from um, design to design that you're working on. But I think the winner for me now is number four. Definitely. I wouldn't have even thought about it. And the reason I wouldn't have thought about it is because I always remember I can hear Barb's voice with the, the watercolour pencils and taking a water brush to the pencils and rotting the wood. But there's no wood on the crayons at all. So why that was in my head, I don't know. Really don't know. But I think it's a really nice way of sort of having a play. And then you can combine both, can't you? So for example, I'm, okay, so let's go, let's try something really drastic then. Uh-oh, I'm gonna see whether this works. <laughs> probably go completely wrong okay so i'm going to take my i've got a new nib i'm going to load it up with some oil then i'm going to take some red like so and then i'm going to be really drastic and take some black Ooh. What's this going to do? It's either going to make a mess <laughs> or it's going to be something really nice. Too much black. Too much black. It's like a, a really dirty <laughs> red. <laughs> Oh dear. Well, I don't know. As I blend it out more, there's definitely more black than there is red. Look, you can even see that in the nib. I wonder if I hold it. See, there's the red. Okay, I'm going to pick up a little bit more red. There's too much oil. It's just moving too much. That's terrible. <laughs> I've tried it. I've tried it. And I don't like it. So I know not to do it again. But I suppose, you know what? Okay, no. we're looking on the back as well, aren't we? So let's turn it over. Uh -uh. I don't like it. <laughs> no, no. Okay, let's try this option then. Let's take the mix mat. Let's put some red on the mix mat and a tiny little bit of black. Okay. Then I'm not going to put the oil on the mat. Um, I'm going to put the oil on the nib. So we're going to blend. Let's pick up a little bit. That's better. I've got more control. Okay. So by picking up by doing it this way, I've definitely got more control rather than using the nib to crayon technique. So if I turn this over now, no, it still looks rubbish. No, it's not, it's not. It's because I've turned the nib around, it's got more of the, the black in it. But as I blend it out, in a 
away, the black sort of disappears. There we go. So have a play with mixing your colours. But for me, the black was definitely too harsh. I mean, it's the stronger pigment, isn't it, of the, of the colour. Um, but we've tried it. And I've just clocked the time, so to speak. Um, how can it be almost 10 to 11 already? See, I had a plan for this hour. Um, and all we've done is we, we've played and practiced. But you know what? Sometimes having that hour of doing that can make a difference. And that's where you can learn. Well, I certainly learned that way that, okay, well, let's try this. So I now know not to do the red and the black, even a tiny, tiny, maybe I should have gone for the brown or one of the darker colors, but not black, just to change the color of that um, red. So have a play, use the mix mat, or just use a piece of parchment and just scribble on that and bring your colors together. It will definitely help with the um, blending nibs, but also how much oil you apply on there. Maybe I would have had better control with the oil direct onto the mix mat. Give that a go. See if that has makes a difference. Um, but I think I've really enjoyed this hour, just trying different things. And sometimes we often don't get the opportunity to try that. We just sort of go with the flow, so to speak. We've always used pencils. We've always done it this way. Um, and sometimes we can be a little bit scared on trying something. Um, but for the sake of half hour, 45 minutes, just play and don't do it on any work. I mean, if you've got a practice piece that you can work on, and then if you don't like it, erase a pencil, rub it out and start again. So it's not as if you have to trace out loads and loads and loads of different pieces to try it on. If you're working on a particular piece like this one here with the frame, just trace the leaf out and try the different combinations. So I want to try one more thing before while we carry on, while I'm waffling and, and telling you what else is on the horizon this week. For those of you that were in the shack yesterday with Bob, um, we've got a busy couple of days coming up on TV. Um, now, what was I going to do? What, oh, that's what I was going to do. Okay. So I'm going to take the darker green now, and I'm going to scribble some onto my mix mat like so then i'm going to let's go for the green nib that i already used okay and let's see if i've got any yeah there's still some oil on that nib okay glasses again okay right okay so yes coming up this week on tv so I'm going to try this and then we'll, I'll discuss afterwards. So I'm going to do it on the piece that was, oh, no, I need to do it on another piece, don't I? Right, let me quickly trace out some leaves while I'm talking. So I digress. Okay, let's just quickly pop that on there. Why quickly? We've got plenty of time. Where's the groovy tabs gone? They're hiding on there, just like so. Okay, let's just bring that in. Uh, okay, so I'm going to take my number one tool and I'm just going to trace out some leaves. So, yes, so we have coming up on Thursday. It's still part of the Create and Craft Christmas, 12 Days of Christmas. So on Thursday at 3 o'clock, it's in the shack on Create and Craft with Barb. Then straight after that hour, I'm on at 4 o'clock. And we're going to revisit the lovely little feel good gnomes and elves. Then there's a couple of hours break, and then Barb's back at seven o'clock with the second hour of the shack designs. Fantastic baubles. Barb blogged about it on Sunday. Um, if you want a sneaky peek of those, 
and then so that's 7 p.m and then i'm on straight after again at eight o'clock with the gnomes and elves then on friday morning i'm on bright and early with the final hour of the elves and gnomes at 8 a.m and then barb's got a new show at 9 a.m mixed media there we go the lovely sue's popped all those up <coughs> excuse me and then at one o'clock finishing off the day is barb with the second hour of the mixed media then believe it or not sunday is the first sunday of the month and it is july on saturday how did that happen um so then Barb's on at three until five for a two hour slot um, for all things sort of not necessarily festive, but wintry and, and everything else. And it still carries on with the 12 days of the of the Christmas event. OK, so what I'm going to do first, I'm going to do this technique and just put some green down onto these leaves like so. Okay, so there's lots to keep you occupied on TV. If it's too warm to go outside, then switch on the TV, draw the curtains, and keep us company. Okay, so let's have a look. So I do like this technique from Glynis. Thank you, Glynis. So we've got our sort of base coat down. And now uh, if I, I put the white card underneath, I can see where I haven't gone up to the edge of the lines okay right so that's given me my sort of like base coat okay then what i wanted to do was take this darker green and i'm going to go back to that other green nib like so pick up some of the darker green and then start to add some of the darker green. Maybe I should just do it down one side to get that two-tone look. Maybe I'll just go over. So this one I'm going to go over completely. Okay, so let's have a look now. There we go. So this one now has a combination of that sort of sage green and the darker green. And then on this one, I've just put a little bit of um, depth, just to half of the leaf. Um, so yeah, have a play. Just draw some leaves out and have a practice. And I think next week, what we're going to do, I'm going to decide but I know what I'm going to go for next week. I'm going to go with the nib to crayon next week. Let's bring that white piece of card in. I'm definitely going to go nib to crayon um, on my finished piece. And then we're going to have a look at colouring in the rows um, with the dorso crayons as well, because there's a really lovely um, colour palette in both selections okay so don't forget um if you don't already um sign up to groovy and clarity worldwide on facebook for those of you maybe you're tuning in via our youtube page um all of our design team are on there um, to offer help and advice and some of our lovely crafting friends also offer advice as well um, don't ever be afraid to um, ask a question. Um, what else? So you've also got Barb's blog, which is barbaragayblog.com, um, that keeps you up to date with all things clarity and all things um, in the shack shack. Um, on a Sunday or Saturday and Sunday, you've got the Clarity Matters blog that lovely Gracie looks after. So on Saturday, if you're not into Facebook, maybe you think, no, Facebook's not for me, then um, there's often uh, what it's called Saturday Share. 
So Grace shares a number of pieces of artwork from both groups on the blog. So that's claritymattersblog.com. On a Sunday, there is a step-by-step -step tutorial with either Groovy, Stampy, Inky. The lovely design team have been firing through some brand new projects that we'll schedule in with Grace um, over the coming weeks. Um, both the Saturday share and the um, techniques on, or the step-by-steps um, step on Sunday always go live at eight o'clock in the morning. Um, so if you want to keep up to date as well of all things Clarity, then maybe sign up to our newsletter if you don't already, because that will keep you informed of TV shows, events, special offers, designs of the week, wig gigs, half price highlights, um, gives you information about the clubs that we do with the stamp, stencil and groovy. Um, so there's lots and lots of information and knowledge out there just need to know where to find it. So thank you to the lovely Sue for popping all the links up. Thank you as always to the design team and Glynis, thank you for that um, tip regarding the nib to the crayons. I'll definitely be doing that next week. What was I was gonna say then. Um, so thank you once again for your company. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, stay out of trouble, stay in, I was gonna say stay in the warm, stay in the cool, out of the warm, um, maybe get those crayons out of the box, A can, <laughs> give them a play, um, see what you can come up with, maybe you'll discover something new, um, because we all have different mindsets, um, and as sort of everyday crafters going into the world of um, parchment craft, maybe we'll come up with something new, um, maybe we won't, but thank you very much for your company, so I'll see you on TV Thursday and Friday. I'll be with you behind the cameras with Barb on Thursday, Friday and Sunday. And then it's back in the shack on Monday with Barb at 10 o'clock. Otherwise, I will see you next Tuesday for another episode of Groovy Tuesday. Thanks very much. Thanks very much. Thanks very much, everybody. <laughs> I need to go and switch this light off and lie down in a dark corner. Um, it must be the smell of the, the torso oil. So I shall see you all next week. Take care now. Bye-bye.